The optics are looking good so far in 2022 for venture capital investments in Africa, with a headline figure of nearly $4 billion already indicated. The African Venture Capital and Private uh, Capital Association, Private Equity Association, yesterday released its half-year report showing progress across regions and sectors. Abi Mustafa is the uh, CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of the African Venture Capital Association, and she's live here with me uh, in the studios to unpack the new report. Uh, good evening to you, madam. Great evening, to have Austin. you. When I see startups, fintechs, you folks are the ones making all the money uh, on the African continent. So I get a lot of enthused when I have to talk about everyone is looking for money. Your, the folks in your sector are the ones making money. So what were the key drivers of this rising in investment inflows into Africa in the first half of the year, despite the economic trend, globally speaking, to the downside? Yeah, so I, I guess the first thing I will say is it's important to note that the venture capital and early stage deals in Africa increased in the first half of the year against globally where everything else decreased. So we're doing really well on the continent. In terms of the drivers, it's the same, you know, macroeconomic fundamentals. It's just attracting investors to come to Africa. The rising middle class, consumer middle class, the young population. And what's interesting is our entrepreneurial spirit and innovation on the continent is really showing now. So the majority of the deals that we saw in the first half of the year were in seed, were seed stage deals, which shows that more founders are coming into the market and more founders are able to attract capital. Also, we're seeing more VC managers that are focused on Africa coming into the market, which again increases the capital that's available to go to founders. So generally, I would summarize it as saying, you know, the macro fundamentals remain very, very strong. Um, global investors and also more homegrown investors are raising capital that's being able to deploy to the businesses on the continent. Interesting, so much money coming through, but, but tell me about the regions and the sectors that are getting the most investment and why. I was surprised when I look at the numbers that education, healthcare, is coming, they're coming from the back and they're coming towards the front of, of getting venture capital monies. Sure, so I'll start with the regions. I guess the region that's leading the charge is West Africa. And of course, it's not because I'm in Nigeria, but Nigeria is really the giant. You know, we're the poster boy. <laughs> yeah, of, of yeah. Capital and Nigeria is yes. the silicon savanna, as I yes. like to say. It's really leading the charge in West Africa, dominating almost 60%, no, if just a little bit over 60% of all of the deals. Value. Yeah in West Africa. So I think Nigeria primarily because of the financial services sector, you know, fintech. The fintech and the financial services ecosystem in Nigeria is really becoming second to none. As we can see, five of the unicorns um, are from Nigeria and are around, um, are in the financial services industry. And I guess the other region that is coming up interestingly was East Africa. So East Africa has now moved to second place primarily because of Kenya. So what's driving growth in Kenya is different to Nigeria is really because those existing founders were raising follow-on capital. So, so Farrakhan and the other big names. Exactly. And then lastly, North Africa, Egypt is just really leading the charge there. What's so interesting about Egypt is it's the most accelerated founder economy in Africa. So a lot of the founders have gone through incubators and accelerators. And I think that just... Um, accelerates the capital that goes there. And I'll touch on your sectors. And yep, you rightly noted that ed tech, uh, clean tech, agri tech, um, they've also become quite important sectors in health tech as well. So I think you'll notice a trend, tech, tech, tech. Yes, yes. Technology health, yeah, enabled yes, yes. sectors. I'm just surprised healthcare, that and education, that was that coming on the back of the COVID-19 pandemic, the whole sit at home, work from home, school from home, whatever, that were part of our lives to the last two years. Certainly. So we've seen investments in the healthcare space, in diagnostics, in the supply chain, in health tech, in digitizing some health systems, health information systems. So again, this has come off the back of COVID-19, one of the only blessings that has come from COVID. And likewise with education, we're seeing more innovations in ed tech, and that's because of um, COVID-19 uh, as well. And that's helping us on the African continent, by the way. What about utilities? Utilities, um, very interesting, mostly energy there. So we're seeing a lot of renewable energy. It was I was listening to what the Sun um, CEO General. and DG yes. um, said earlier. But yeah, we're seeing a lot of innovations in mini grids, renewable energy as well. And I think that's going to continue to grow as we all become more climate conscious. 
and most African countries are working towards their transition plan. I think there's and Nigeria, opportunities there. Uh, digging into that as well uh, with our own 2060 uh, uh, agenda and, and what we're planning to do in terms of energy uh, transition. Uh, but again, what are the chief concerns of venture capital? Is it all sweet stories? What are the com concerns of the PEs and the VCs? I mean, I'll, I'll say firstly that the concerns of the P and VC in Africa is not too dissimilar to emerging markets, but I'll just touch on some that are quite nuanced to our operating mm -hmm. environment. I think currency devaluation is a very big concern. Some of the key markets, Nigeria, Ghana, Egypt, South Africa, have been affected by devaluations. And that's a concern not just from the GP's perspective, but also from the LPs who actually give capital to the GPs. So when you have currency devaluation, you have to think a lot clearly, um, a lot more intently about the businesses you're investing in because you want growth to outpace the rate of the devaluation. So that's a big concern. I think for the GPs also, so for the fund managers themselves, the concern is how to attract domestic pools of capital. And I think we've talked about this before when we spoke last year. Um, it's really now is the time to really get African institutional investors to start allocating to the asset class. So the concern is the DFIs can't continue to, you know, make the industry sustainable. So we need to now start crowding in commercial pools of capital. capital. Exactly. Put and our so, mouth where our money is and our, yes. and our money where our mouth is. Exactly. So we need to begin to grow African uh, investors. Uh, do you think this, is this could happen across Africa? We've got sovereign wealth funds, for example, and all that. Where do you think the money could come from? Yeah, I think sovereign wealth funds, they're playing their part. I think pension funds are a key. They've got a lot of assets under management, and we, we haven't even started scratching the surface of their allocation. Exactly. More. And 0.3% of that has been allocated to private equity when they can allocate up to 5%. You want, you want more for your sector? I certainly want more. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> But, but, but again, you talk about currency depreciation, devaluation, but we've got to deal with a few other headwinds, such as uh, interest rates going back up all over the world. Everyone is saying, please stop, 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 asking central banks to stop. WTO, UNCTAD, others are saying, please, it's time to rein in this interest rate hike and inflation chasing that has been done. How much dent would this make to VP, VC, VCs and, and, and private equity investors? I mean, so to be candid, we have started seeing some of the effects of that in the fundraising figures that we had. So we had a little bit of a slowdown in fundraising in the first half of the year. Uh, private capital managers were able to raise in, um, in aggregate 700 million in the first half of the year, which is slower than we've seen historically. So I think we're going to see the effect of all of the macro, global macro headwinds on potentially the fundraising and LPs' appetite to allocate to managers and LPs maybe just be more conscious about their allocation. So that might have an effect. However, I'm still slightly optimistic because there has been a large amount of funds that have been raised over the last two years. And so that excess dry powder will have to be allocated but, but and invested. But with interest rates going higher and dollar getting stronger in, 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 in developed markets, do you think uh, these uh, venture capital investors will be thinking of whether to invest this in assets back home where yields could get a lot higher? That's a possibility. But having said that, those markets are very mature. So the Average. advantage that Africa mm -hmm. has, that our continent has, is the fact that you can, the, 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 the market isn't as mature. So the returns that you can get far outpace what you can get, especially in the early stage mm -hmm. investing stage, what you can get in developed markets. So there will be investors that choose to just keep their capital homegrown, but the smart ones mm -hmm. should continue to allocate and diversify. Are you still recently. optimistic about $7 billion for full year report? I don't like to be quoted on that number, but we hope <laughs> we hope we get to seven billion. And if we don't, we hope that we get to at least six billion. You're going to get back on this seat in the next couple of months, my friend. Yeah, I have hope. this conversation, and again. I hope I'll be saying seven, seven billion. billion dollars. Okay, that's the, that's the that's the take. <laughs> seven billion dollars. We will talk about this next year. Thank you so much. It's great having <laughs> you, you around for, having me. Uh, for your time. Abi Mustafa, the CEO of the African Venture Capital Association.